Miners are not going to like this, but gamers actually might. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Rupro and their 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable. Are you tired of slow tiny cables? Well, no longer because this baby can deliver perfect quality 4K 120Hz HDR content up to an incredible 33 feet thanks to its mind-blowing 48 gigabits per second bandwidth which is perfect for the new RTX 30 series cards if you're looking to run a new 4K high refresh rate HDR monitor or a new LG OLED 120Hz 4K TV with your PS5 or Xbox Series X. And best of all, it's backed by a 5-year warranty. So if you want to get a high-speed, high-quality cable, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. Alright, so today I have a couple things I want to talk about which could have a huge impact on PC gamers, and the first thing I want to talk about today has to do with the long-rumored Mining Limited RTX 30 Series GPUs, which by the way, credit to Compite 7 Kimi, as I do believe he was the first one to mention that actually Nvidia may be refreshing all of its RTX 30 series cards to be mining limited so that a lot of these miners who are mining Ethereum wouldn't be going out and buying GeForce gaming cards to do so. Now, whether or not this is actually going to be good for gamers is something we'll have to talk about in a little bit here, but one thing's for sure, miners are definitely not going to like this. But in any case, let's go ahead and see what Video Cards had to say about it as this story does come from VideoCards.com and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So according to VideoCards.com, the AIB Galax will actually be producing lower hash rate versions of both the RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 very soon here, and they will be known as the LHR versions of these GPUs. And here's what Video Cards had to say about it. Quote, the specification pages confirm the GPU variants being used in the RTX 3070 LHR and RTX 3080 LHR models, as well as the estimated hash rate produced with these cards. They then go on to say, quote, the hash rate to LHR models appears to be half of the current RTX 30 series offer. So this is definitely some interesting news here, and it sounds like these GPUs could actually be releasing fairly soon here, and if that is the case, well, this could spell the end to mining on GeForce RTX gaming cards. However, this does actually bring up some questions for me, which is, is this going to actually work? And then on top of that, is this going to be good for gamers? Because, you know, in the past, they have tried this before with the RTX 3060, and it ended up failing with them eventually uh, accidentally releasing a driver for the 3060, which unlocked its full mining performance. However, this time around, it kind of sounds like they're a little bit more serious about it, so I'm not entirely sure if they're going to, you know, end up releasing a driver for this, and, you know, whether or not this is going to work, I think, comes down to, you know, just how secure this is, because if it's much like the 3060 lock and it's just a driver, well, then I think eventually someone's going to finally find a way to get around this, and it's not really going to work for too long, in which case uh, none of this is really going to matter too much, and it's just going to be a small annoyance to miners, and it's really not going to help gamers whatsoever. However, if this time around it's a more secure way of going around it and it happens to be a uh, hardware lock of some sort which I'm not entirely sure if they can do that without affecting the gaming performance but if they figured out how to do that much like how they figured out how to lock some features off for quadro cards that you can't access on the GeForce gaming cards well then uh, in theory then yes it could be so difficult to actually unlock the full mining performance on these RTX GeForce gaming cards uh, that it's just going to make it not really worth it for miners to go out of their way to try and figure out how to do so and if that's the case, well then now we have to talk about uh, if this is successful, is this actually going to be good for gamers? And I think there's going to be a couple of different camps on this one. I think on the one side you're going to have people who do like to mine on the side with their GPU who are definitely not going to like this. And then on the other side you're going to have people who have no interest in mining whatsoever and they're probably actually going to like this quite a bit because in theory this could potentially allow for more gamers to get their hands on the GeForce gaming GPUs uh, assuming that Nvidia actually allocates their uh, GPU supply towards the GeForce cards and not towards their HX CMP mining cards. So that's what I want to talk about because, you know, in theory, if they're able to completely lock this away and, you know, it's not able to be hacked whatsoever, then yes, uh, potentially you could have an easier time getting a hold of these cards as, you know, even if mining goes away completely, it's still going to be a little bit difficult, keep in mind, considering the fact that there's just so much demand. It's not going to be easy to get these cards even if mining goes away. However, it probably will get significantly less less difficult if there's a lot less demand coming from the mining community. So yes, on the one hand, it could be a lot better. However, uh, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, uh, if they do end up actually taking a lot of these GPU supply and start putting it towards the HX CMP mining cards instead of putting it towards the GeForce gaming cards, well, in that case, you could actually be looking at a scenario which is actually worse for gamers as not only now are we looking at you still having a really 
difficult time getting your hands on these gaming cards, but now you can't even mine on them if you wanted to make some of your investment back. And then on top of that, you're also going to have the issue, just the whole world is going to have the issue of, well, these CMP HX mining cards without the display ports on the back can't be reused or, you know, recycled in any good way. So they're just going to end up as e-waste. So that's definitely not good. So, you know, overall, I think what we're looking at here, at least in my opinion, is that, you know, we do have an opportunity here for this to be really good for gamers. And I am hopeful for this to actually work. However, we're just going to have to wait and see how well this actually works as well as uh, where the allocation is going to end up from NVIDIA because those two factors are going to determine whether or not this is going to be a good thing for gamers or a bad thing. But, you know, ultimately, guys, I am a little bit optimistic about this. But if you're watching this video right now, go ahead and do me a favor and pause this video and let me know in the comments below, do you think that this is a good thing for gamers or do you think that this is a bad thing for gamers and why? I definitely want to know your thoughts and I'm going to go ahead and read everyone's comments to get an idea of what everyone thinks about this. But the second thing I want to talk about in this video comes from the Twitter leaker executable fix and this has to do with some upcoming APUs coming out from AMD in the near future here and I think this one is actually definitely good for gamers and according to executable fix on Twitter he said quote Rembrandt is RDNA 2 based with a maximum of 12 CUs. He then went on to say the only Zen 3 plus that I've seen is the 6 nanometer one in Rembrandt. So it sounds like the Rembrandt APU is going to have 12 compute units of RDNA 2. So you're going to be looking at a GPU, uh, which if you compare it to the 6700 XT, the 6700 XT is likely going to be around three times faster than this APU. So it's definitely not going to be like a 1440p gaming GPU, but it sounds like the GPU inside this APU could actually be pretty decent, especially if Rembrandt ends up using not only DDR5, but on top of that, they could potentially be using some Infinity Cache, which could allow the APU to get much better scaling out of the GPU, and we could be looking at a very good 1080p entry level a GPU inside of this APU, and this is definitely good for gamers because there's really going to be no point uh, for miners to be buying up these APUs as you can't really scale them very well. You're going to have to buy a motherboard as well as an APU, so that's going to be a lot more difficult than just lining up rows and rows of graphics cards, so we could be looking at a solution for gamers here, at least for the entry level gamers who want to be playing at, say, 1080p competitive level settings, uh, playing games like Apex Legends or like Fortnite or these other uh, battle royales that are very, very popular right now, or maybe even uh, Rainbow Six Siege, a lot of those games, if you play them at 1080p and you lower the settings, a GPU like this would definitely be good enough. So again, I think this is really, really good news for gamers, and I can't wait to see the next generation of APUs. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that NVIDIA locking off mining on its RTX 30 series cards is a good idea or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.